Hey, Bruce Taylor, the Boomer Consumer. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Coffee Break. Hey, grab your favorite beverage, coffee, soda, tea, milk, whatever, and join me as we talk a little bit about hi-fi music-related topics. And I think today is going to be kind of a fun one, and it's about tone controls. Now, I subscribe to a number of audiophile forums, and it seems to me that there's a number of people that believe that it would be terrible for you to use the tone controls that are on your amplifier, your preamp, your you know your integrated amplifier, your receiver, whatever. It's wrong. Don't use tone controls. You don't need them. That's their philosophy. But what they're not saying in is that you've got to have an ideal room with ideal room treatment, the ideal speakers in the ideal position. <laughs> Playing an ideal source has been mastered superbly in order to avoid tone controls. That's what they're not saying. Well, here's the thing. Not everybody has a dedicated listening room where they have professional uh, uh, sound dampening materials and so forth in there. Professional room treatment. They don't have it. We have to share our rooms maybe with the family. It might be we may have a rig in a family room or we may have it in a spare bedroom, something like that. We don't have the ability to make that room absolutely perfect for audio. So what tone controls do is they help us compensate. You know, small rooms can be have a little bit of bass boom on it. If you've got too much of um, maybe too much carpeting, maybe too much drapes or whatever, that can kind of kill off the high end. So tone controls helps us compensate for that with because we're living in the real world here. You know, something else. Not everybody hears the sound the same way as we do. We all have little differences in what we pick up on with our hearing. Maybe some of us don't pick up as much on the high end, or maybe we're not feeling the bass as much. And so tone controls allow us to move that music to where we're happy and that we're enjoying the things that we want to enjoy. It allows us to tailor it to our personal liking. Isn't that what listening to our music is all about? Here's another reason, and that is tone controls allow us to compensate for poorly mastered recordings. I've got several albums that I love from the 70s, but they honestly, they were mastered for just, they sound like crap, and they really do. But tone controls helps bring some life into them. And I think that's what's important. Not everything was mastered all that well, or was mastered for a certain way. For example, maybe it was mastered for vinyl, but you're going to listen to a digital format, etc. The bottom line is, is that tone controls can help us compensate for deficiencies in the mastering of the recording. One of the biggest ones, <laughs> I think one of the most important, I cannot listen to my rig most of the time at a loud volume. I, you know, I'm married, my wife, you know, is a family, it's, it's just not going to work out. So I generally tend to listen at lower volumes. And one of the things I really loved about vintage audio gear was a little button called loudness. <laughs> you hit that button and suddenly you could hear more bass and the, the trouble was a little bit brighter and just sounded better. Well, it turns out that's related to what's called the Fletcher Munson curve or the Munson Fletcher no, Fletcher Munson curve wrote that down on a note and it's just basically the lower the the volume the less we're picking up on the bass and treble so if you don't have the loudness button which was God's and I wish they still made it you can at least compensate by using your bass and treble controls to kind of bring that curve up to where you can hear what is essentially gone AWOL due to listening at a lower musical volume. You know, another thing that people into audio do a lot of, and that's swap components. And the thing is, we're looking for synergy among components. Well, some things will sound better with others. Some preamps will sound better with other amplifiers and so on and so on. But tone controls allow us to make minute adjustments to where we can kind of get that synergy going, maybe on products that we would, if we didn't have tone controls, we'd go, yeah, this don't sound good. But tone controls may allow us to do that. 
You know, one of the arguments audio files will make is that tone controls are totally unnecessary if your system is properly calibrated. But think about this. How many people are relying on room correction and DSP in order to compensate for deficiencies in their listening environment? And guess what? That's a form of tone controls, more or less. It's computerized and using algorithms and so forth, but it's essentially tone controls. And if it's not necessary, the system will generally deactivate it. So, yeah, I think that's a very good response to the audio file beliefs that you don't need them. So the bottom line is, whether you're compensating for the room or you're looking for synergy with your components or you're listening at lower volumes, all these things, it adds up to the simple fact that tone controls are still a vitally necessary part for most people's rigs because of the way we have to live and we have to accommodate others and our hearing and our musical tastes and enjoyment. Tone controls play a vital part in that. And that is my take on this episode of Coffee Break. Love to hear from you. So make sure to leave a comment down below. Bruce Naylor, the Boomer Consumer. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.